Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Azure Functions is a serverless compute service that lets you run event-triggered code without having to provision or manage specific infrastructure. In this video, let's look at how we can set up a build deploy pipeline for Azure Functions. We will be also setting up an environment specific variable that you can replace for your functions running on different environments. Here, I have a simple function that's HTTP triggered which gets the value from the configuration and returns back a message. The configuration for my local environment is stored in the local settings.json file and has a key environment. You can find that file in here and it has a value local. Note that this file is ignored from the source control. So in Azure Functions, we will be setting this up in a different way. Let's run this to see if this all works as expected. On the local environment, it uses the Azure Functions code tools to run and simulate as if it was running on the Azure infrastructure. Since this is an HTTP triggered function, I get back a URL that I can use to invoke this function. Let's copy that and head off to a browser and make the call since this is simply a get service. And then you get back the message hello from local. So looks like everything is working as expected. So let's push this code up into an Azure DevOps repository. If you're new to Azure DevOps, check out the video linked here or in the description below on how to get started, create an account, create a project and add code and more. For now, I have my code pushed up onto the YouTube Sables project in Azure DevOps. Link to this project can also be found in the description. Under repos, you can find there are multiple repositories. This also contains the Windows service code that I used in a previous video. For this video, we are interested with the message sender dot function repository. We have the Azure function source code now in this Azure DevOps repository. So let's head over to the pipelines and create a new build pipeline. Let's choose Azure repos because we have the source code in the Azure repository. Choose the appropriate repository, in this case, message sender dot function and choose your pipeline template. We already have a .NET Core function app to Windows on Azure pipeline. This does the build and deploy in the same pipeline. I'm not a huge fan of having the build and the release in the same pipeline. I want to keep it separate so that the build pipeline gives us an artifact that we can use in the release pipeline and progress this through the various stages of our application, like the dev environment, test and production. However, if you're okay with having them in the single pipeline, you could go ahead and start with this template which should guide you through the pipeline and deploy it to the Azure function. So for me, let's choose a started pipeline, which is an empty pipeline with a few scripts that's already laid out for us. Since we don't need these scripts, let's remove them. To set up the build pipeline, we need three steps. First, we will build the project, zip or archive the output directory, and then publish these artifacts, which we can later use in the release pipeline. So let's add these using the assistant here. Since our application is in .NET Core, let's use the .NET Core command to build the project. So choosing that gives us different options. Since in this case I need to build, I'll choose build. We can specify the path to project. Since we have only one project in that repository, we can give star star to match any folders and also give star dot csproj. So this selects the project file. For the arguments, let's pass in so that we can output the binaries to the build binaries directory. For the build binaries directory, Azure DevOps already has a variable which is build binaries directory. And let's have a subfolder which is publish output. Since what we need is to output the folders, let's add the output flag and specify this directory here. Let's also specify the configuration and leave it as release. You could also make this as a variable and use that here. So let's add the step, which should add a new task under the steps in here. Now that we have the build output set, let's add the code to archive this. Make sure you have the cursor in the right position and search for the archive task. The archive file takes in a folder. In our case, it's under the binaries directory and publish underscore output. We need to archive the whole contents under this folder. We don't need to prepend the root folder to these parts. So let's uncheck that and make sure everything else is by default. 
This is going to create an archive file under the stagings directory, which we will be later using to publish this. So let's click add and then go ahead and add the publish artifacts step. So look for publish build artifacts. It's under the staging directory, which is where the archive file is getting pushed. And let's push this with the name of drop into the Azure pipelines. So let's add that. We have the three tasks set up. So let's save this. Let's commit this directly to the master branch. Or you could raise a pull request to the master branch like I showed you in the Azure DevOps getting started video. So let's save and run this. The build is triggered and it has started the job. We see the three steps that we had specified, the .NET Core CLI task, the archive and the publishing the build artifacts. The build is completed successfully. So let's go back to the, the job to see the linked artifacts that's published as part of the build. We have the drop folder and the build artifact.zip file. We could download this and make sure this has everything as expected. So this has the Azure function inside the zip file. Now that the build pipeline is set up, let's go to the releases pipeline and add a new release pipeline. So let's click new and choose new release pipeline. Since what we need to deploy is an Azure function, let's search for the function and choose deploy a function app to Azure functions task. You could also choose the one with a slot if you have multiple slots inside your Azure functions. For now, I'll just choose the normal one and click apply. For the stage, let's call this dev for development environment and close this. To choose an artifact, let's click that and choose it from the build pipeline that we just set up. So under the same project, I can choose the message sender dot function pipeline that we just set up. Click add and that sets up the artifact successfully. You could also trigger automatic deployment by turning this flag on on this icon here. Setting continuous deployment will trigger off a release every time a new build artifact is created. Let's click this task and set up the required parameters. So we need to choose the Azure subscription. In my case, I have it in my professional subscription. Let's choose that. I have an Azure function that's already created on the Windows. So let's choose that and choose the appropriate app service name, which is message sender dev. So we have everything set up here. We need to add a variable for this environment. So note in our code, we used a environment config value for the local host. This was in local settings. So in the Azure functions, we need to pass it to the app settings. So let's add a new value and call this environment and specify the value as dev. Since this is very specific to the dev scope, let's choose that as the dev. To know more about Azure variables, check out the video linked here or in the description below. Once that is set, let's go back to the task and make sure we pass on this configuration to the Azure functions. So under application and configuration settings and app settings, we can set this up. Click this three dots here to edit the app settings and add a new value. So let's add environment and specify the variable dollar environment which will be used from the variables. Note, we could hard code the value for dev in here without using the variables. However, I prefer to keep them separate and keep it in variable groups. Let's name this pipeline as Azure Functions. Save that again and create a new release. We already have a build that's triggered. So let's choose that and click create. This has created a new release. Let's navigate to that and deploy it into the dev environment. Clicking into this, you can see the different tasks that's running and the progress of that. Since we only have one task under that, you're going to just see one task here. Here, I have the message sender dev under the functions app in the Azure portal. So let's click to that. And under functions, you can see the function one, which we have just created. This name is coming from the code, which is the function name here. Let's go back to the portal under the configuration and application settings. You can see the environment value that we passed from the build pipeline. This is hidden by default. So clicking that shows you that this is the dev value. Let's go to the function again and select the function that we are interested in. You could click test and invoke the method from here. This is going to show a message, hello from dev, which is what we expect. You could also get a function URL explicitly and use that 
to call from a different browser and it returns us the value as expected. So we have set up a build deploy pipeline for the Azure functions into the development environment. Let's say we need to add a new environment. So let's first add a different function here using the add button, give a resource group. For now, I'll just give a resource group that I'm going to delete immediately after this video and choose the app service name as message sender test. We'll choose code, keep the runtime stack as .NET Core and the version as 3.1 because that's what I'm running. Since I'm in Australia, I'll choose Australia East. Give it a storage account, keep the operating system Windows. This is why we chose Azure Functions on Windows in our dropdown there. You could even choose Linux since this is .NET Core. Let's keep the plan type as serverless. You could also look at the other options that you have here. Go to the monitoring. I don't need App Insights, so let me turn that off. Usually I would keep that on, but I don't want since this is just a demo video. Let's review and create and click create. The new function is created. So let's go to the functions app and we can see the new function that we just created. So let's go back to the DevOps pipeline under the releases. Now we can easily add a new step under the Azure functions pipeline. So let's go here. Let's clone this step, set the trigger for manual only so that we can deploy this as and when we require. Let's rename this to be test and click inside to set the values for this. Here we want to deploy this to the message sender test app service. So let's choose that. Since we had the configuration value coming from the environment, we can go to the variables and set this. When we created a new scope, it automatically copied across all the environment variables that you need to set. And you can choose this and update the value to be test. This is why I like to keep the variables separate so that it's easily manageable here. And also you can see that in one place. You don't need to repeat this for each of your built steps as well. So you just write that once, clone it and set the values here. With the test value set up and all the tasks set up correctly, let's save this and create a new release. The release two has been created and this is queued to be deployed to the dev environment. I can also choose to deploy this manually into test. So let's click the deploy button here for test environment as well. Both the steps are successful. So let's go to the Azure functions again, go to the test environment under the configuration and application settings. There is the environment variable and you have the value test for the test environment. Let's go to functions where our function app is here, get the function URL and invoke this from a different tab. This is saying hello from test and the dev environment is the same. So this returns us back the same message. Hello from dev. We have successfully set up a build release pipeline for our Azure functions in Azure DevOps. This allows us to change code and have it continuously deployed into one of our environments and then promote it from there into the other environments as and when we feel appropriate. Hope this helps you with the journey to going serverless and with Azure Functions. If you're using Azure Functions to talk to other Azure resources, you can check out my video on managed identity and see how you can set up authentication for these calls. With managed identity, you don't need to set up any extra pair of keys or secrets to do the authentication and it is seamless experience in the Azure stack. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also subscribe if you want to be notified of future such videos. Thank you and see you soon.